Kruger, es Carlos Pérez Castillo, de Walkies Imaging Biomarkets, a una de las Good morning, everybody, and thank you for your presence. My name is Carlos Pérez, and uh, I am an engineer uh, that belongs to a group of five engineers working together with the radiologists of uh, Hospital Quirono, Valencia. In, uh, in this brief uh, presentation, I will show you an abstract of the result of this uh, multidisciplinary collaboration. Um, I, will, I would like to take profit of the familiar environment and the extension of the time to make this presentation as an open presentation. So please feel free to interrupt me at any moment for making any question you, you have. Or wait uh, until the end of the presentation as you, as you, want, as you want. Well, uh, at first I would like to explain the title of, the, of our implementation. It is the Imaging Biomarkers Automated Structured Assembly Pipeline. It is a very long title, but uh, uh, this uh, acronym also means Imaging Biomarkers as soon as possible. Uh, we try to, uh, to implement, to make a quick uh, use and implementation of the biomarkers in the radiological workflow. I will explain you the technological support to make this possible and also I will define some biomarkers and give some examples. The, de the development and implementation of digital imaging has changed the workspace of radiologists. Um, as, uh, as I told before, this, uh, multi this multidisciplinary collaboration uh, has created new workflows and represent a new challenge for us as uh, biomedical engineers to, um, to, make, uh, to give support and make a technolog uh, good technological approach for these new workflows. The viewing, uh, the viewing processing and properties extraction from the images make the diagnosis based on medical image one of the parcels of medicine where innovation is most visible and uh, imaging biomarkers are the result of this revolution. Well, what are imaging biomarkers? Maybe everybody knows an example of biomarker without uh, imaging. For example, the glucose in, in, a blood, in a blood test. Well, even imaging biomarkers are something similar, but extracted from the image. This gives us uh, some uh, advantage. One of the um, the best advantages is that they are non-invasive and that uh, we can take profit of, of an imaging study already done to a patient to take out uh, a lot of um, data, a lot of additional quantitative data and then make uh, reports and, uh, and give the radiologist a quantitative and uh, objective information to improve their, their report, their radiological report. Uh, we can define imaging biomarkers as uh, objective uh, characteristics that are related to normal bi biological processes, diseases, or the, resp the response to treatment. The implementation is changing the concept and workflow or, of uh, radiology today. Uh, we apply new modeling techniques and computational procedures to medical images and a set of quantitative parameters is obtained. This quantitative information provides accurate and reproducible measures of various uh, processes in individual patients. And uh, the final product of uh, this, uh, uh, all these uh, procedures on these quantitative parameters calculation is the uh, post-processing report. The post-processing report is a document that is given to the radiologist to improve the, the final uh, radiologist uh, report and di diagnosis. Uh, this uh, potential to display and measure a weight range of biological and physiological situations and their non-invasive nature, as I told before, makes imaging biomarkers one of the most active research fields. <laughs> well, what, uh, what is our purpose with uh, our implementation? and, and and the main uh, objective of, of our, uh, our platform is the workflow improvement 
of the radiology department by including imaging biomarkers in this workflow. We, we can provide, we provide additional quantitative information to the radiologists in order to obtain more accurate di diagnosis. Um, we have as engineers to give uh, support to this uh, implementation by uh, the proper technological support. And this technological support is the post-processing platform. Um, seeing, uh, seeing this workflow, let's try to see only the blue color. If you pay, pay attention only to the blue color, you can see the, tradi the traditional radiological workflow where the patient arrives to the clinician. The clinician demands an uh, imaging study. Then the, uh, the image acquisition is done in the MRI of with the CT. And uh, then uh, uh, standard qualitative information, either the images, arrive to the radiologist. The radiologist sees uh, those, uh, analyzes those images and uh, give a diagnosis, but this diagnosis contains almost only qualitative information because he doesn't have uh, quantitative parameters. He just have uh, an image. And uh, this uh, qualitative information arrives to the, to the clinician in the, in the radiological report. But if we add the imaging biomarkers to, the, to this workflow with the, with the technological support that I will explain later, we have the red color addendum. Here uh, we take all these images that are acquired in the MRI and uh, after making, uh, after preparing the images and um, making all the post-process and all the post-processing algorithms, we obtain we obtain uh, qual quantitative information. Uh, this quantitative information is presented to the rad radiologist in the form of uh, uh, post-processing reports. We also send the post-processing reports uh, to the PACS. Uh, I think everybody knows uh, what uh, what is the PACS and. Well, uh, I will speak also about the DICOM standard. If uh, somebody has any doubt, uh, please uh, ask and I will explain the, uh, all these standards. What does it mean? Well, as I, as I was saying, uh, this, quantitative, this additional quantitative information arrives to the radiologist. So the final diagnosis is uh, more rich than before because it has this, uh, this addition. Now I will, uh, I will speak and I will show you six examples of uh, imaging biomarkers, three for the brain and three for the prostate. And we have always to remember that uh, the final result of this uh, post-processing on the, on the imaging biomarkers is the, the post-processing report. As an example of, the, of a brain uh, post-processing algorithm, uh, we, we have the morphometry. And, uh, we extract parameters of the um, of the volume of the gray matter and the white matter of an uh, individual patient, and we can compare these values with the normal population values. So, for an expert, this is a, a very a very good information that can be used to determine if this patient suffers some pathologies. Another example of a brain uh, biomarker, well, of brain uh, post-processing is the functional MRI. We, uh, with the functional MRI, we make a special acquisition in the, in the MRI stations that is based on bold sequences. Bold means uh, blood oxygen level dependent. This way we can uh, determine the areas of the brain that are being activated when uh, a given uh, paradigm is uh, being uh, given to a, a particular subject. For example, for a schizophrenic uh, patients, we make an auditive uh, stimulation with uh, bad words and so on, and we see the, the areas of the brain, almost in real time, that are being activated with, the, with this auditive paradigm. So uh, with this data and also comparing it with the normality, we can extract conclusions about the, the pathology of this patient. But uh, it is almost uh, everything uh, just research for now. But we are obtaining in the group uh, very good uh, results. 
Another example of a brain uh, biomarker is the, well, brain biomarker or post-processing is the neurotactography. <coughs> With uh, a diffusion sequence, uh, it's isotropic, it means uh, we we determine the um, with diffusion tension imaging. We determine the mobility of uh, water particles in the in the three directions of the space. So we can draw the neuronal pathway of the neuronal tracts. Uh, this is a very valuable information in order to uh, plan a proper surgical uh, intervention, uh, just for uh, avoid uh, any damage to. The, um, delicate areas of the subject's brain. Another example of a diffusion sequence is applied to the, to the prostate. But in this case, it is anisotropic. That means that uh, we calculate the mobility of uh, the protons of the water in, in the space, but uh, not uh, paying attention to the direction of this mobility. So we can determine the cellularity of uh, the of different areas of the tissue, and I start, we start the conclusion that the the areas with uh, the the most uh, tumoral areas are have more cellularity and uh, have uh, less uh, diffusion of the the protons of the water because there is uh, there are areas with uh, necrosis, fibrosis, and so on and. Uh, uh, more more uh, blood vessels that are, are growing, neovascularization that uh, doesn't uh, allow the the protons of the water to move uh, as uh, free as if, uh, they would move in the healthy tissue. With this, we we obtain a a post-processing report that uh, overlies uh, the maps of of the diffusion on the uh, on the slices obtained uh, from the from the MRI and give this quantity of information for the, to the radiologist. Another example of a prostate uh, uh, biomarker is the perfusion. Here we rely a vascular permeability parametric mark, map on uh, anatomical images. One of the characteristics of the tumoral tissue is that uh, it has a very chaotic vascularization and the, um, the way the blood uh, diffuses over this tissue is different than uh, in a non-pathological tissue. Uh, the perfusion report overlies a vascular permeability parametric map on anatomical slices, highlighting uh, the difference on the diffusion of the blood of arterial vessels through the capillarities of the prostate tissue. And we obtain this uh, this post-processing report. Um, I have uh, select, I have chosen also the, the example of the prostate to speak about these three examples of biomarkers and to show you how with three we we give three uh, post-processing reports with different uh, parameters uh, parameters calculations to the radiologist. So uh, we can uh, imagine uh, the, um, the, val the value of this information for a good diagnosis. The third example of the prostate uh, uh, biomarker is the spectroscopy. In this case, we give a biochemical and metabolic uh, profile of the gland with uh, this, uh, this post-processing report. Uh, for example, uh, some indicators of tumor presence are increased choline and uh, regional reduction in the levels of citrate. Well, um, now that we have seen uh, some examples of imaging biomarkers, I will speak to you about the technological support, the technological approach we have chosen in Hospital Quiron to make uh, the, introduction, the introduction of these uh, imaging biomarkers possible in the, in the radiological workflow. This is the data pipeline. We have a, a server installed and connected to the hospital network. The server is implemented uh, also as a DICOM node. So it, make it, pos may, it makes it possible to receive and send uh, the images and also send the reports to the PACS 
but also by other means, as uh, for example, on external uh, external data, like um, for example, an USB or a CD that arrives from a different hospital. We also can send directly uh, the imaging, um, the medical imaging study from the MRI acquisition to our DICOM node with, without sending it to the past. So we can take profit of all the information of the MRI that is not um, useful for, uh, for the diagnosis, but is very useful for the post-processing. So we don't need to send all these extra data to the, to the packs. Well, once the, all this information has arrived to, to our, uh, our server, it is uh, classified in the proper directory structure depending on the tags of the DICOM uh, headers. As you know, the, the DICOM header has a lot of information about the, a lot of parameters of the, of the image. For example, uh, uh, the patient administration data and uh, the parameters of the image acquisition. Um, I mean, this is a very useful information for the post-processing and also for the with classification of the, of the images. After this classification is done, the proper image uh, preparation is done. Uh, for example, some uh, post-processing algorithms need uh, the images to be transformed from uh, DICOM format to analyzed format. Uh, and then when preparation is done, uh, post-processing algorithms are launched. We have very different uh, post-processing algorithms. I didn't tell you before, but uh, if you want uh, more examples of uh, bi imaging biomarkers or uh, post-processing reports, you can uh, <coughs> go to our website, uh, quantificacionquironvalencia.es, and, uh, and you can see a lot of, of these reports. Well, when uh, all these post-processing uh, algorithms are launched, uh, they ask for the inter interaction of the engineer when it is needed. Uh, all the algorithms are, are automated as good as possible, but uh, sometimes interaction is needed, for example, for uh, um, defining uh, ROIs and so on. Then when the, when the post-processing algorithms finishes, the final product is the, the, the post-processing report. This is, uh, the, well, sorry, the post-processing results are um, stored in a database that we have in the server and also all this data are used is used to to generate a unstructured uh, DICOM report that is sent to the packs and then in the packs the radiologist can uh, can see it this is the workflow description of the of the platform uh, well, it's more or less what uh, I explained before, but um, here uh, I even spoke about the notification when uh, an imaging study arrives to the server. There is a notification that uh, tells uh, the engineers that uh, a new study has arrived. Uh, well, this, I explained this before, sorry. <laughs> and uh, well, I didn't spoke about the da database. The, the results that are stored in the database are very useful for uh, uh, later research and uh, for normality patterns uh, structure. Uh, we have called uh, this uh, platform all this, uh, this assembly pipeline workflow, IBS app, as I told before. And uh, the, the result uh, facilitates the fast inclusion of imaging biomarkers in clinical practice. We exploit the possibilities offered by technological advances and multidisciplinary collaboration. This new process approaches radiological workflow to the new personalized medicine paradigm. Uh, it allows extracting uh, physical, chemical and biological properties from individual patients. The resulting quantification reports contain additional information that complements a traditional radiological diagnosis while improving its accuracy and the evaluation of the effectiveness of treatments. The IBS app is implemented in uh, Java using the NetBeans uh, ID 
and the post-processing algorithms run uh, with MATLAB. I would also like to speak about the, uh, the CV remote is a project we are working in and we are using this project to have a feel of application of our uh, new workflow implementation. Well, CV remote is a uh, a Senit A project that uh, tries to quantify and understand the mechanisms of cardiovascular remodeling, improving the knowledge of the pathophysiological mechanisms. So it is a very good field of application of the of our new workflow implementation. Well, I uh, would like to thank you for your attention. Should you have any question or any doubt about uh, everything I told, please. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is it Are, uh, with this, with this? Yeah, until uh, half a year more or less, uh, the final results <coughs> in uh, post processing uh, uh, report arrived, uh, was arriving to the radiologists in, uh, in paper. So the, all this uh, quantification uh, workflow was already uh, working. But now the, the new implementation we are doing is that the final report is sent to the PACS, so it is stored for a later uh, reading also, if, if they want, and it is uh, a more uh, secure way to, to give them the information. And also we, we take all the results and, uh, and store them in, in a database. Let's, see that, uh, let's say that we have um, uh, computerized all the procedure, the final result. No, uh, for now this database is only for the um, for our department for the the, the quantification engineers because uh, we have uh, chosen this approach because we are special client clients we need a special structure of the database and we take the advantage of the personalization of the database because we can extract uh, for example normality parameters and so on this is the reason that we have not chosen a an already made uh, application like, for example, XNAT or dcm 4 g because those are a closed database and we needed a personalized database. Any other question? It's not uh, from, from the for your presentation. My question is not hmm. specifically for, for your content, but for, uh, I also know that for that you are quantification group and well, as most of the people here are, are engineers, it's not so common you probably know that so many engineers are working on this topic as uh, so uh, good testers. Could you explain your experience and uh, how you are currently interacting with uh, clinicians, radiologists, experts and uh, well, I wonder also your expectatives. Uh, I mean, because now you are five, uh, are you thinking? that maybe in one year, two years, you will be uh, low and you will be 10 or uh, 20 people working there? Or? We are five engineers. Uh, three of them are here in this room. Uh, Amparo and uh, Roberto are the, there. Uh, well, for the first question, I can, I can say that uh, the, um, so sometimes engineers make solutions for problems that uh, do not exist. Uh, but working in a hospital together with the radiologist, this is our advantage that we make the solutions that are asked for from the radiologist, and we also help them to um, to tell us what they need. So we can say that our solution, our implementation, is very useful, and uh, it, it is already being used. Uh, the imaging biomarkers are defined together with the, the clinicians and the radiologists. So uh, we give the solution to the to a real problem. Any questions? Yes. Well, congratulations for the presentation. Very Thank good. you very much. Yeah. My question is, uh, does the patient have a, uh, an active role in the self-management of the treatment? Just the receptors or interacting with the thing with the medical? Uh, and how to improve the, the treatment or 
Well, it is um, the patient. Uh, uh, let's start saying that the patient receives the, this quantification report. So the sensation is good when he goes out from the hospital. He has the images, and also this quantification report is visually very good and uh, gives a good sensation to the patient. But also, it, uh, uh, mo very more important than this, this is uh, an improvement of the diagnosis. The radiologist has a uh, new, has more data, has. Uh, quantified objective data to, to make a diagnosis so the patient is, uh, is benefit, benefit, uh, it is a benefit uh, to the patient it, it, uh, was it your question? Oh. Yeah, but it, uh, uh, does, uh, does the patient have uh, um, which is the, the, the main role he, uh, he has? Just, ah. just the receptor of the, the treatment or if, if, he, if he can to, to self-manage any part of the treatment or to take own decisions in any part of the, of the process. But uh, your question is about the, the quantification workflow. Yeah. Okay, it is uh, the, for the patient, it is the same procedure as in any other hospital. For an MRI study, for example, the patient stays for there inside an hour making the imaging study. We just take all this data and make uh, uh, the quantification reports. Mm -hmm. The patient for the patient is the same. Sometimes there are some sequences that uh, mm, imply an additional time for the patient to to stay inside the MRI. For example, the the functional uh, MRI sequences, mm -hmm. but uh, it is uh, just sometimes. Okay, thank you.